This is a public service announcement. Please mute your Echo devices now. I thought I'd give a quick overview of what the system looks like. Um, this will save you skipping forward in the video to get to the point where I'll show you actually the, the front end of it. Um, so this is the, well, there's two parts to the front end, really, both of which are in the Node-RED dashboard, as you can see, which is where we are now. So the first part is the family controller or the, the zone controller. And this consists of, at the top, we've got scene selection buttons. In the middle, we've got um, individual light controls. Um, so for multicolored lights or RGB lights, you can set the color. And for single color lights, you can't set the color. Um, and at the bottom, we have um, the ability to create, update or delete scenes. Um, these are the scenes. So it's a kind of a, an all in one system so that, um, you know, other people in the family can actually enjoy setting the colors of the lighting in that given room, in that given scene, rather than you having to do any of that from the back end. Um, the second part to the front end is the kind of the back end front end, which is where you can set up within the Node Red dashboard um, your light fittings. Um, not only your light fittings here, but your zones and your fitting to or fixture to zone assignment. So this is where you assign one of these to one of these. Um, that I'll explain this in much more depth um, later in this video. Home lighting management system. Now, if those words just get you really excited inside, then you're watching the right video. If you have no idea, then you might also be interested because there's loads of things that are general to Node Red in this video. Um, anyway, this is about a lighting control system which I've designed in Node Red. Um, it uses the Amazon Echo, but that is only a small kind of part of it really it's not built into the system the system is independent of that but i will be demoing it showing using the echo so alexa set bedroom lights to five alexa set bedroom lights to two. Oh yeah colors scenes front end scene management you know, like your radio uh, presets in your car, where you can kind of like dial in your radio settings and press and hold preset three. We've got that here, except you can have as many as you like. Um, and as soon as you set them up, they respond to she who shall not be named as well. Um, you can update them. You can change the colors and the faders and all that kind of stuff. Alexa, set bedroom lights to two. Alexa, set bedroom lights to four. Or if I'm working late at night, Alexa, set bedroom lights to six. We just have the angle poise and the partner can sleep without being disturbed. Well, completely not without being disturbed because the light from this is too much. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, I'm going to dive right in. So here goes. This is my first Node Red show and tell, and I'm going to cover my new lighting control system. Um, I've done my best to keep the actual control system independent of the types of lighting you'll actually want to control. Um, so, for instance, my test home setup consists of Philips Hue bulbs, Z-Wave lighting dimmers, you know, little dimmer switches that go in the wall, um, and Lightwave RF dimmers, which also go in the wall. Um, the output stage of the system can be piped through to whatever types of light you have. Um, so you can see here, this is the output of one zone controller. And these are the little MQTT listeners that I've set up, which then um, uh, get kind of piped through to the lighting fixtures themselves. Um, as you can see, this is using the RFX COM um, to drive my Lightwave RF bulbs. So they have their own dimming message templates. And um, these are single colour lights, um, obviously. Um, and these are Philips Hue like multicolored dimmers as well. Um, so yeah, the output stage of the system is piped through to whatever types of light you have. Um, in the end, I'm hoping to control my home using a combination of DMX dimmer racks, LED strips driven by cheap Arduinos or the ESP8266, and possibly hue bulbs, um, as I really do like the color rendering of these Philips hue bulbs. I know they're a bit expensive, but <clears throat> I do like the the kind of the, the colour quality of them. 
Um, the main concepts are as follows, um, and I'll just skip over to the dashboard for this. Um, we have light fittings or fixtures over here, and we have zones in the home over here, and we have zone presets or scenes, which are not actually shown in this configuration screen on the dashboard. Um, you'll see that the setting up of or the configuration of the actual lights and the adding them to the zones takes place within the dashboard which is um, quite a nice feature. Um, well, it's one of the features that I wanted to have here so that you could get someone to kind of set up the lighting or um, without having to go into the Node-RED backend um, or the admin user interface. Um, and the idea is to keep it separate so that, you know, if ever I want to assign a light fitting into a different zone, um, for instance, I have got this thing called a Philips Hue Go, which is like a wireless coloured light, um, which I might want to bring from one room to another um, and include it in the scene settings for that zone. I can just do that from the front end rather than having to go into the back end, which I think is quite a nice feature. Um, anyway, so we've got fixtures, which I think is the American term for what we call here in the UK light fittings. Uh, I'm not quite sure why I use the American term for this, but it just popped into my head and I stuck with it. Fixtures are individual lights or light circuits. So this could be a single hue bulb or a set of ceiling lights on one dimmer or even two bedside lights plugged into a single mains dimmer switch. Um, I have some Lightwave RF dimmer plugs that plug into the 240 volt mains outlets in the home. Um, so you'll see here on the node red dashboard a means of creating new fixtures. Um, and we can set the type of fixture. Um, I call it the control type. Um, again, this isn't the type of physical light we're controlling, but rather the control type, I guess. We define this here because it has a bearing on the type of dashboard control that we'll show. Um, for example, if it's a dimmable single color, um, then we'll show a slider. Um, if it's a RGB, um, dimmable RGB, then we'll show a slider and a color picker. Um, we've also got the option for individually addressable LEDs, um, but right now I have absolutely no idea how we're going to specify the control of an individually addressable LED on the dashboard, um, but it is there for future use. I've also included these ones because I think that although, you know, the colour picking for these will probably be the same, um, I'm going to have Arduinos driving RGBW strips, um, so that's a... Um, red, green, blue, white, um, and RGBWW. Um, for those of you who don't know, you can get these LED strips which do obviously RGB um, chips, and then it's got a white chip and, and another white ch chip. So one's warm white and one's cool white for mixing, because when you actually mix R, G, and B together, um, you can of course get something that approximates white light, but um, it's not a good white light. Um, so you can get warm white and cool white. So that's what RGBWW is. Um, so that's fixtures. Uh, then we have zones over here on the right, which are areas of the building where you want to control the lights. The idea here is to support open plan living areas where you might actually have one fixture in multiple zones. Um, or you might want to move fixtures between zones, as I mentioned before. Um, for example, you might have a light which is physically situated between the kitchen and the dining area, which you want to control as part of the scene for both of those areas. Um, I hope that makes sense. So yeah, a fixture can, of course, exist in multiple zones. Um, then, of course, we have the fixture to zone assignment list. Um, so you can see this is starting to look like a relational database, which it kind of is. Um, so this is what you might call the lighting configuration dashboard. Um, but then we can also go and insert a zone controller for a given zone, which is here. Let me just show you the bedroom. Um, and this here on the left, this entire panel here is the zone controller for a given zone. Um, and as you can see, the zone controller consists of these preset buttons. It consists of each light in the zone. Um, and it gives you the ability to create new um, scenes um, or presets. I've, I've called them scenes here, actually. So let's stick with the name scenes. Um, and the 
um, scene generator allows you to create, update or delete scenes from the dashboard itself. Um, so here's a little demo. You can see here I've got um, that's zero. You can't see the lights going on and off in this room, but they are. Um, and then I've got one called night red, which is very low level red. Bedtime brown, sunset reading, warm medium. Um, I wish I could show you on this video the effect that it's having on the room because it's really cool. But anyway, and then I've got full white, which is an abuse to the eyes. It's horrible. Um, it's very, very bright in the room now. Um, and then I've got loads of other ones as well. Uh, my idea was that the first five plus zero um, are um, the ones that we'll use more often because you'll remember one to five or zero to five as being kind of, you know, zero is off and then one is kind of a low level and then it gets brighter as you go with different kind of colours as you go through. Um, this also hooks in with Amazon uh, She Who Shall Not Be Named. <clears throat> so I'll give you a demo here. Again, sorry you can't see what's going on in the bedroom right now, but Alexa, set bedroom lights to four, which is this one here. And it does that, goes to warm medium. Alexa, set bedroom lights to three. It's this one here, sunset reading. Alexa, set bedroom lights to zero. And there we go. Now, I can do all of the settings, um, and scene settings and updates from the dashboard, as I mentioned. So I'll give you a little demo of that. Um, let's set it to warm medium. And let's say I want the wall not to be 70, but I want it to be 50. Hit warm medium, I've set it to 50. Now I'm going to select the scene warm medium from this list and then I'm going to hit update. Boom. Now, when I say Alexa set bedroom light, Alexa set bedroom lights to zero, and then I'm going to set it to zero, one, two, three, four. Alexa set bedroom lights to four, you'll see wall is now 50. If I want it to 64. I can do that and overwrite that setting with that one there. Um, so I've, I've got some cool kind of silly colours going on in the bedroom here. I've got one called police car. In fact, let's create a new one. I'm going to just set them all to random settings. Um, this uses the Windows colour picker, which is a bit of a faff. But actually, from your iPhone or from a Kindle wall control panel, which I've got in the other room, um, it's a really nice way of setting the colour because this is like kind of one, two, three clicks to set the colour. But on the other devices, it's just kind of one click. It's, it's much nicer. Um, so let's say um, you'll see here these are single colour. So it shows as white um, and you can't click these colour pickers um, because these are just single colour demo type lights as defined in the configuration dashboard that I showed you earlier. Um, and what was I doing? Yeah, so let's kind of create a new scene ID. So I've done them in order 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So we'll create a 16. I'm going to create scene ID 16. We'll call it, um, you know, uh, anything really. Let's just call it weird light because why would you have that, those colours? And then I'll hit save. Oops, ID already exists. So it's it's found that 16 already exists. Perhaps that's because I've missed a colour and I've deleted one out of there. Um, so let's just go for scene 18 and try that. Weird blue. And then we're going to go save. There we go. And it's added the scene to my control panel. Um, and that now will show up in this list, weird blue. And if I want to delete it, can select it and then press the delete button and you'll notice this thing here disappears boom um so what was that scene 18 let's go and go weird blue oops uh weird blue again she didn't hear me alexa set bedroom lights to 18 sure enough it goes to my weird blue setting um so that shows that what we can do is we can set she who shall not be named, although I've been naming her throughout this video, haven't I? Um, over here, I've got my echo tab and let's just look in to see what's happening. 
So I've got bedroom lights and it pipes the scene number. So normally with She Who Shall Not Be Named, you're setting the light to a brightness of 18. Um, but the way I've implemented it is I've used those as scene numbers. So I can set the bedroom lights to zero, that sends a zero to the MQTT path home light third floor bedroom scene, and that sets that to zero. Um, so I'm kind of stealing the idea of the brightness here and using it as, as a way to set scenes, just ignore all this. This is um, because I tried to set a color when the light was turned off. Um, so that's how that works. So we get a zero out of there, sends it to this MQTT message, and then in the light config, we're triggering the scene, we're actuating it, a message gets sent to this subflow, which is got the which is where it's all stored, as in that's where the light settings are stored, and then it pumps a message back out to the zone controller so that the zone controller updates with those settings and also the scene management as well. That's the this stuff down here because we want it to reflect what's in there anyway I'll, I'll kind of show you the um the context data for what's going on here let's just refresh global context um we'll go home light and this is everything for this system is stored in light config so you'll see we've got fixtures zones and fixture zone mappings um and the presets which are here are stored within the zones themselves so if i just show you zones these are all the zones i've got set up and let's look at the bedroom zone that's the friendly name the date it was created and the time it's created and then it doesn't store anything else but the scenes and then these are the scenes those numbers which i was referring to before so the actual object key here is the same as this scene ID. And that is also used for the she who shall not be named number that we that we set it to. Uh, so the 18 one that I've just created there as my test looks like this, weird blue, created date, created time, and then the setting. And these are all of the lights that were in the zone at the time that we created that scene. So let's look at the third floor bedroom wall. Brightness is 96 and then there's the RGB colors um, for a single color one it looks like that just with brightness now let's say I wanted to um, I've called it manage presets but please ignore that <clears throat> it's not managing presets at all it's managing the lighting config um, so I'll go back to this and I'll, I'll kind of talk you through let's set up a kind of a fake um uh zone so let's call it youtube the youtube zone now let's call it something sensible let's call it garage um that's the zone id um in fact i'll call it gf garage ground floor garage just to stick with my convention and then i'm going to call it back garden garage and the reason for this is the id cannot have spaces in it because the ID becomes the object key. And I think I've got some validation to check for that as well. Um, so ground floor garage, back garden garage, hit save, and you'll see it has appeared there with no, none of these little things in. Let's say I now want to create a new fixture. We'll call it, um, because I know that it's fixed within the garage, I can call it GF underscore garage underscore ceiling. Um, it doesn't need to be fixed within the garage. It could be a roving light if you wanted to. Um, so I could just call it anything. So here's one, I've, I've got a roaming light. Um, that's location is set to roaming. Um, anyway, ID is garage ceiling, friendly location is the garage or we'll call it ground, ground floor, no, we'll call it back garden garage friendly fitting type again this will just be ceiling because that's what we want to show um, when we are in the zone controller for that thing we don't need to show it as the garage ceiling we just want to show it as the ceiling 
Um, let's say this is a dimmable single colour. Um, and then we can also set the resolution of dimming. And my, why would you want to do this? Well, um, we might want to, um, well, perhaps I'll talk about why we'd want to do this later. Well, in short, when I'm sliding up a slider, um, it changes the light as I'm sliding it. Now, if I've got a Lightwave RF, which uses, which uses the RFX comm signal, um, it's a slow signal. It only sends messages once every half a second. Now, you're not going to want to flood a 100 um, messages when they can only be sent every half second. So I might want to set this to medium. Um, and then that means I can only, and I'll show you the effect that that has in a minute, actually. So um, let's say medium, yeah, let's set it to um, 10 out of 100 as the medium. And then I'm going to create this one and it has appeared there. And then what I want to do is I want to assign the GF garage ceiling to the zone, the new zone I've created called GF garage, hit assign. As you can see, it shows up in my assignment list here, which I could delete it if I wanted. And it also shows a little thing there, which I can delete it from there if I want. Um, or I could delete the whole zone. And in doing so, it will delete the assignment um, to that as well. But I'm not going to do that yet. Anyway, I've created the, um, the configuration for the zone and for the fitting. Let's have a look at that in the... Uh, global memory. Let's just refresh in Context Explorer. Okay, so, uh, home, light, config, zones, and we've got GF Garage. And as you can see, it only has a friendly name, a created date, a created date, and a created time. It doesn't have any scenes in there because we've not created any. So we'll look in the fixture zone mappings. And we're going to see GF garage, GF garage ceiling. That is one mapping where it maps the GF garage ceiling to the GF garage. And that is the zone ID. That is the fixture ID. And that's the created time and created date. That's what, that's what a mapping looks like. Sorry, I had to cut the video there because this was being a bit laggy, but it's, it's OK now. Um, so the other thing that we need to do is we need to create an instance of the controller on the actual dashboard. Um, like this one is here for the bedroom. Um, so let's take that bedroom one. Um, so each one of these sets here, that one and this one here and the third one, um, each one of those is an instance. So if I just control C and copy all those nodes down here, um, hopefully you're going to see that the only things that we would need to change for a different instance would be the incoming um, MQTT path to trigger the scene and that environment variable that defines what um, zone idea is in there. So let's do that now. So we know this thing that here is no longer 3F bedroom but it is GF garage. And then this one here is also GF Garage. Um, that environment variable, and I'm sorry, I'm recording this second section a bit later in the evening, so I can't remember what I've said now, but just to recap if I have already said it, and if not, to tell you, um, that is an environment vari variable in the subflow zone name, which then gets used to set the zone ID. See, it says set the zone ID to the zone name. Um, so let's come back out into light config. Um, so yeah, I would need to set that environment variable, which is what I've just done here. Um, of course, I need to, these are the two um, parts. Remember I said this is split into three things here. So the first of those two is, is the buttons and the sliders, and the second one is this. And the reason that we've got them as two separate ones um, as two separate UI, uh, dashboard UIs, is because we might not want to have the ability to manage the scene, so I've just separated them out. Um, but what we would need to do, as well as setting the MQTT path for the triggering the scene 
and the subflow environment variable is to put these in the right place in the dashboard and perhaps to set their size as well. Um, so here's one I've created earlier, garage light. And I know that it's not going to be six by 14. It's going to be more like six by, let's go with six by 10 for now. Um, and then the scene manage part at the bottom, um, it'll be exactly the same size as all the other scene manage things, but we're going to put that in the group garage light. And then let's deploy. That's a little slow, isn't it? Not quite sure why that is. There we go. Um, and then when we go and scooch over to the garage thing, we can see that that is there and it's good to go. And let's say I wanted to set a scene idea of zero, call it all off and save and then um, this is my, by the way, I talked about resolution. Um, the resolution is set on this slider. Um, so you can see I'm going up in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, so that was my 10 out of 100, that was the resolution. Um, you can have much finer control for things like Philips Hue lights because it, it works much more nicely than Lightwave RF. Um, depending on how quickly you can get that message sent to the light fitting or the the, the the actual, the actuator. Anyway, so I've got my all off. Um, let's go with low light is scene one. We'll call it low and save. And then we'll go 30, that's two, that's medium. And then we'll go 50, can be three, that's medium high. And four can be quite high. Oops, let's go 60, four is quite high. And then we'll go full, and that can be my scene five. Full, oops, full brightness. <clears throat> so you'll see that this is arranged in this grid format. I'm using CSS grid, um, such that the first one is full width, the second two are half width, the third, three or then the next three are third widths and then after that um because i've i've gone with the idea that my brain can only cope with five main scenes so you know where i'll remember what these are so it goes from low to high but then i might have additional ones with different colors and whatnot from six onwards up to whatever number you like I'll call it um so party or something like that and then they make little buttons along the bottom. And, you know, if you can train your brain to remember them, then that's great. Anyway, let's just delete party for now, like that. <clears throat> so there we have it. And clicking on each of these items obviously sets them as we've just set them up. Um, the portion of control that um, I have the voice control on the Amazon Echo. Um, I have under my Echo flow here. What I would need to do is create a new one of these Echo inputs, call it, you know, garage lights, and then simply pump that into the, the scene trigger path. Um, and that's all we'd need to do. Um, so what else can I show you? So perhaps we should go through some of the code or the light config. Now there's loads, there's loads to talk about here, but I'll just go through it in kind of block detail so that you can kind of have a closer look at the actual code if you like, um, if you download the flows. <clears throat> this first section here is coping with adding and removing a fixture. So that's on the, um, I've called it manage presets, but it's actually just the, the general config. So that is this entire box. So we've got the save button, which is this save button here. We've got the ID, friendly location, friendly fitting type, the resolution and type. These are all inputs, dashboard inputs. Uh, so I could have done this with 
um, UI template, but actually at the time that I did this, I didn't really know how to work the UI template to, to do what I wanted. And obviously now I do, because I've done loads more with it. Um, but what it does is when you actually start typing, let's say I start typing a friendly location like, um, you know, garden, fish pond, you're going to see in context, in the flow context, under the new fixture, um, it has, before I've hit save, this is the temporary storage for the name. So as I'm typing, that gets updated. So if I remove the D, for example, you'll see that it says fish pond. Um, and then the validation, uh, because you'll note that if I try and save it without filling all the stuff in it, it won't save. Even if I do half of it, but not all of it, it still won't save. It says missing info fixture not saved. And that is because um, this new fixture function node, um, the code for that deals with that. So let's just quickly have a look through. Um, so this says save new fixture entered in dashboard to global context, includes form validation and duplicate check and supports clearing the form when done correctly. So first we're gonna check the form was filled in properly. So um, when I fill in one of these, it will, every time I update, like I, every time I enter a character into one of these things, it will, you know, set this uh, flow context memory item here. And then when I hit the save button, it will actually then try and commit it to memory. And if it isn't committed, if, if it's not able to commit to memory because we don't pass validation, then, then that's, that's how that's handled. So first of all, we check the form was filled in properly. So if, um, if that new fixture is not even defined, um, then that says you didn't enter anything, fixture not saved. And then we set message.error to true. And then that is checked elsewhere, I think in the, um, yeah, in here. So if message error is true, I think we've got an ng if Angular directive. Uh, no, we don't. Ah, oh, no, that's just a validation. Um, so that'll be set in here. Um, anyway, let's move on quickly. Um, so if that's, you know, if that passes, assume the new fixture object exists. Um, so var new fixture equals flow dot get new fixture. So we're getting this whole thing here. If the form is not complete, so we're going to go through and check that each one of the items, so friendly location type, friendly name and resolution, we're going to check that it isn't either undefined or blank. Undefined or blank, undefined or blank. Um, and if, you know, any of those things is the case, hence the ors. And if any is the case, then missing info, fi fixture not saved, gets sent out of here into the validation template. And then... It stays there for good until we get a success, which happens down here. Um, so if we've got this far, we have a good new fixture to add. So we'll create global fixture object if it's not there. So that's the fixtures object, which if we're creating a new light fitting or fixture and many more have been created already, we'll have this thing here. So, but in case it's not there, in case it's the first one we create, then we're going to just create the fixtures object. And then we're going to get all of the light fixtures, I all of this stuff here, and then we're going to add to it and then save it back. Um, the reason we want to do that is because we want to check to see if the ID already exists. And that ID is the key for this. Um, so if it already exists, then send the error. So set message.error is true, and that would validate as follows, it would say, oops, ID already exists, um, else actually do it. Um, so this is the you know the default settings for the given um, type of fixture. So non-dim will be in state false, which means the lights are off. Single color would be brightness zero. RGB would be brightness zero with R, G, and B in an array. Um, RGBW, it's got that additional white RGBWW has got that additional white and the white, so the warm white and the cool white. 
I'm not sure which way around that is. And then individual addressable, God knows what else we're going to do here later. Um, so then get the date and the time and then put pop all these details into the object and then save the object, commit the object and then say message payload success added fixture and then we're setting message error to false because we haven't got a message error um, and this thing success here will presumably say if message error is false then yeah so if message error is false or if not message error then return message payload of empty and then that will basically um, say yeah that was created and it will wait five seconds then it will clear that validation um, so let's just have a look let's go like that and we'll hit save and then this will go away and say oh no we've already got a one two three let's delete that one let's add it again success added fixture three five four three two one and that's gone so that's how that works so that's hence this delay thing here so yeah the top part of it is for dealing with the new fixture and then the bottom part of it is for dealing with the uh, register of light fi fixtures um, so we don't need that because it's actually updated from here as you can see flows into there um, so what do we do first we get the uh, message dot so we set message dot fixtures to we get the global object or all, all of these fixtures and set that into the message and then we send that message to the um, UI template node and the UI template node has lots of funky, actually it's not too much in there is it? There's no CSS, so that's good. Um, so it's, it's in table, it's a table. And as you can see here, um, we've got ng repeat on the key value in message fixtures. Um, so we've got the key first of all, so that's the ID. And then we've got the value, um, location, name, type, resolution, added and delete. Sorry, a friendly location, friendly name, type and resolution. And then we've got the created time and created date. And then we've also got this button to delete the fixture. And um, that button sends a message where message.action is delete. And the topic is the key. So that would be the ID. Um, and then that would get deleted by this thing here. So if message.action is delete, um, then uh, what are we doing here? Yes, this is good. So if we are deleting the fixture, then this makes sure that we delete any mappings that were, that were created that refer to that fixture. So it goes through, so it loads into memory all of the fixtures, um, is that right? Oh no, sorry, it loads into memory all of the fixture zone mappings, goes through them and checks to see if that, um, uh, if object mappings, brackets, keys, dot fixture ID, yeah, so checks that fixture ID is the same as message topic and if so, it'll delete that um, from the fixture mappings as well. So that's how that works. So that's the add remove fixture and then we've got something pretty similar actually kind of similar setup for these zones except it's only got an id and a friendly name um i, I won't really go through it because it's pretty much the same except there's some even more funky stuff going on with the zones list because you've got these um you've got this ng repeat thing here for the data grid rows for each one of these then within the rows you've got the ng repeat going for this it's kind of like a nested ng repeat angular repeat which i'll show you here so yeah there's quite a bit more styling on here um so yeah that's the data row and then this is the column where those little mini button delete button things are and that mini button, um, so yeah, this is the ng repeat start and ng repeat end because we're splitting it up into different elements. Um, and there's a little, because obviously we've got to have the, the label and the actual button. 
Um, so that sends message action is delete fixture mapping. The topic is key comma val one. What is val one? I don't know why I've called it val one. There'll be a reason for that. Um, and that's my little X, which is the X to delete. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, and again, yeah, same situation here. I'll just go through if message dot action is delete, then that will delete the zone and any mappings for the given zone. So it's tidy, it tidies up after itself. And then here we are deleting the fixture mapping itself. So that's the little buttons to remove the mapping, but keep the zone. Hope that makes sense. And then here is where we assign fixture to zone. Again, it's all pretty much the same as the above. So I'm not going to bother going through any of that. Um, so what does bear going through is one of these instances though. Um, in fact, perhaps you can work it out yourself if you have a look through, but we've got this trigger scene, um, which will split the incoming MQTT path. So here we've got home forward slash light forward slash GF garage forward slash scene. So what it's going to do is it's going to check. Now there might've been a better way of doing this, but this is how I've done it. Um, we split it, we split the message topic um, on the forward slash, um, creating you know an array whereby um, first element, second element, and third element and fourth element are as follows. So if topic zero is home, i.e. if, well, if that is home and the second one is light, and the fourth one, i.e. number three, is seen. So if it's home light something seen, then trigger the scene. And the reason I've done that is because in case you actually accidentally listen to the wrong thing, then it would just ignore this and not try and do anything, which would be bad. So, um, yeah. So anyway, message.zone is topic two. So that's 012, that's this thing here, GF garage. And that is the message.zone. And the message topic is gonna be the message payload. Whatever the payload coming in is actually the topic um, from now on. And we're gonna say trigger scene with that topic. So that happens in here. So the actuate function node, um, we've got loads of stuff going on in here. I'll just quickly run through it for um, just to give you an idea of what's going on. First of all, we've got this function hex to RGB. That is because our um, dashboard uses a color picker, which requires hex um, and we store it in RGB. So why is it hex to RGB? Because it's the other way around, because we are coming out of the dashboard. So, so yeah. This is on the other end of the dashboard. So actually we want to take whatever the dashboard said, turn it into RGB, and then we can send the message out and set the object. So this actuate thing does that. It, it actuates it and it sets the object um, in memory. So that's your hex to RGB function. Um, I did not do this regex. I think I nicked it from somewhere, um, but yeah, you get the idea. Um, and then, all of these kind of ifs are corresponding to the different things that you might do with the zone controller. So let's have a look at the zone control. Um, ah, there's nothing in there because this is actually done within the subflow. So perhaps I'll come to that in a minute. Um, anyway, it's expecting the following. Message.action to be brightness. Message.action to be colour. So that's if you slide the slider. That's if you do the colour picker. Um, and then that's if you trigger the scene. That's it. That's all there is to it. With some logic and you'll see that each one of these things um, does the thing. So it sets up values, stores the colour to memory, global set into the right place and then it will output the message to actually set to actually do the light change. Um, and the same with trigger scene, or slightly different with trigger scenes because it's got to load in 
all of the fixture settings to work out what we're triggering. So yeah, message topic is the name of the scene. Message.zone is the ID of the zone that the scene applies to, um, i.e. light.config.zones.messagezone.scenes.message topic. So here we want to get the scene settings because obviously if we're triggering the scene, we know we need to know what you know which lights to output. So we're going to get the scene settings for that and um, actuate the fixture and store its new setting to memory. And we're going to start with brightness. So we'll do brightness there, and then we'll do the RGB here, and then we store the color to memory, and then yeah. That should all be self-explanatory. So that's the actuate for the control of the lighting. So the first two parts of this, where are we? So that is the first two parts. That's the lighting buttons, the scene buttons and these lights, uh, the individual light controls. And then the bottom one is scene manage. And again, I use you know, message.action again to do stuff. Um, so uh, we've got message.action is new scene here. Um, anyway, you can just kind of go through this and have a look through if you like. It's I've kind of commented the code. Um, you'll see we've got a section for deleting the scene, for updating the scene, and for creating a new scene. Um, what does this do? Oh, we need to reset the form as well. Um, but what does this do? Get inputs. For each key press, update the temporary variable. That's this thing over here. Um, ready to store in global once the button is pressed. That's basically what I was doing above, except in a function node, not in like individual nodes. Anyway, that's that. Let's just have a quick look into the subflow in detail. Because you're probably getting bored by now and you can have a play with it yourself. Um, so yeah, set the message dot zone ID. This is where we get the scenes and the lights. Um, so this is the um, RGB to hex, um, which is the, you know, the opposite side of the thing that I showed you before, which was hex to RGB. This is where we take the RGB array and we return hex. Um, put a little hash in front of it. Um, this is a bit more complicated here because what we have to do is we loop through all fixture zone mappings and to see if the contained zone ID is the same as the message dot zone ID. Um, then use the contained fixture ID to get the fixture info, the friendly name of the slider and the RGB values or whatever. Um, if it's RGB, then we need to convert RGB values to hex here. So that's what we do here using that thing up there. So RGB to hex. Now we want to list out the scenes for the zone. And so this is the scenes for buttons, message.scenes for buttons, which gets sent into this template node. Everything gets sent into this template node. And this is where the magic happens. So I was talking earlier about this CSS grid view thing here. That is all of this stuff. Um, so yeah, column start, column end. That's where we set how many items there are on the column. And the font size is slightly bigger the first for the first lot of items, I think. Is that right? Yeah, it is. So these ones are really big. These are a bit smaller. And these are much smaller. CSS grid. Um, and then, so that's all the CSS for it. It's quite a bit there, isn't there? And then, yeah, so we've got the scene buttons. And then we've got the sliders. And we've got a basic colour picker. We're not using the any angular colour pickers for this because I got sick and tired of trying to make it work. Um, we are using, what are we using? Um, if it's not RGB, then we have no colour picker, so it's not that bit. So if it is RGB, um, I haven't done warm white RGB yet, but I could change that to if it is RGB or warm white are uh, the other types of RGB then we are doing a picker. So yeah, input, yeah, it's an input with class picker, type color, that's where, that's where we tell the browser that this is a color picker, I think. Um, and I've got a class that I 
got some additional CSS for up there. Um, ng model value dot color, and then obviously when we change it, it will send the action message dot action to uh, color the topic the key and the color is the value. Anyway, I'm droning on now, so I'm going to stop. But hopefully you get a good idea of how this lighting system works and I will let you have a play with it. Um, I'll put links below to some code at some point. I won't do it when I upload the video because I want to go and have a glass of wine. It's 20 to 10. So enjoy and thanks for watching. Do, do, do. Demo of do, bedroom do, do. and living room. Do, do, do. Sorry, do, 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 repetitive. Do, do, do. Mute your Alexa do, now. Do, do. So I thought I'd show you what this looks like in real life. Um, please excuse the messy bedroom. I'll take you into the lounge after this as well. Alexa, set bedroom lights to three. That's very nice and relaxing lighting. Alexa, set bedroom lights to two. Alexa, set bedroom lights to one. So that's kind of like nighttime mode. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of light from my screen going on here, which is that, but um, it is very, very dark in the night time with uh, red light just to stop you tripping over in the room. Alexa, set bedroom lights to four. It's a lot brighter. It's kind of medium warm light in here. Um, obviously, we've got all these other kind of crazy settings here. Um, so I can't remember what the numbers are because my brain can't hold that much information. As I said, I go from zero to five and then I stop. But if I wanted to, I could go, police car is 16. Alexa, set bedroom lights to 16. Wow, 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 wow. Um, Alexa, set bedroom lights to 15. I've called this, um, 15 is, I've called it, oh, which one's 15? Hold on. Red alert is 15. We've got some green in there for some reason. I think I added this light later. So let's just take the green out and then update 15 with the green, without the green, red alert, there you go. Um, so this is kind of red alert. So, you know, if there's an alarm goes off or something like that, that'll happen in the nighttime. It won't be horribly abusive to the eyes, but it will tell you something's gone wrong. Alexa, set bedroom lights to 11. This one's called orange concrete. The effect doesn't really come across, but it looks pretty cool in the nighttime. Um, neutral, very dim is eight. Alexa, set bedroom lights to eight. Alexa, set bedroom lights to nine. Not much changed. Perhaps there is no nine. There is no nine. Um, oh, blue's good, because when I'm listening to Miles Davis kind of blue, I like to do this. Um, except I can never remember that number 10. Alexa, set bedroom lights to 10. So yeah, that's, that, that's pretty nice. Um, uh, you might not want to be, be into the kind of the chavy lighting, but it's quite fun to mess around with. Um, Petri dish is just vile. Pink gloss. Again, no idea why anyone would like that. Um, late night work at desk. This is an example of a functional lighting. Um, so this is where the other half is asleep. Um, that's number six. So I can remember six as well, actually. So um, that means that, you know, you get minimal light from there. Obviously, I don't work with this big screen on. Uh, sometimes I do. Um, but yeah, it's much easier on the eyes when you're asleep. Alexa, set bedroom lights to zero. And everything's off and we only see the light of the screen. Anyway, if we go into the living room. Alexa, set living room lights to three. They were already on three. This is the wall control panel. Alexa, set living room lights to zero. All off very bright outside. Alexa, set living room lights to four. Sherbet. Kind of sherbet-y. Alexa, set living room lights to two. 
these are much more effective when it's really dark at night, to be honest. Um, anyway, you get the idea. Um, the system, obviously, as we've looked through, also gives the ability to actually set the lighting as you go and go, oh, I'd like that as a scene. And then you just generate a scene, create a scene. Um, my next video will be the very cool um, music control system. Yeah, I listen to a lot of random jazz. Cover art, the whole shebang. And um, this is a random jazz button, which is a, I've got to have a massive, massive playlist of jazz or loads and loads of jazz albums on my server. And this selects them at random and it creates a massive, a never ending playlist of random jazz. But if I decide that I like the album that we happen to be listening to now, that, button loads the whole album starting from the beginning so there you go i'll detail that in the next